Hi, <laughs> welcome back to my channel again. All right, so um, yeah, so today we are going to look at subtopic 2.3, main organ for transpiration and a little bit of transpiration process. Okay, in a plant. So this is under biology form five KSSM. So make sure you have your pen and paper ready. Take notes, lots of notes, and yeah, let's do this. Okay, as usual, let's go through the learning standard. Okay, so there are only three learning standards here, which is quite short. Okay, so first is to justify the necessity of transpiration. Why is transpiration important in plants? Okay, and also to describe the environmental factor that can affect the rate of transpiration. Okay, so we have four factors that we are going to look at. Uh, light intensity, temperature, air movement, and also relative air humidity. Okay, so how does it affect whether uh, the rate of transpiration increases or decreases with these factors increasing or decreasing. Okay, and lastly is to conduct the experiment you know, to study the effect of environmental factors on the rate of transpiration using photometer. Um, I of course we can't do it here, but I have a video and also a, a short description that I can discuss in this video. So stay tuned and have a look. Okay, so now transpiration. What is transpiration? This is the definition of transpiration. If they ask you what is transpiration, this is your answer. A process of water loss in the form of water vapor through evaporation. Okay, from plants to the atmosphere. Okay, so transpiration happens, okay, where, okay, from the roots, okay, where water diffuses in the roots, okay, by osmosis, and then the water goes up and also water loss through the stem lenticels, okay, and also through the flower and the leaves. Okay, so if you look at this picture, the pathway of water movement in plants. So, number one, root absorbs water from the soil. Xylem transport water upwards in the plant stem. Okay, veins, the leaf veins, uh, sorry, number three. Three, uh, the leaf veins transport water to the leaves. And then lastly, water evaporates to the atmosphere through the stomata. Also, actually, from the stem through the lenticels, if they have the lenticels. Okay, so, so all this water evaporating into the atmosphere from the roots, okay, to the leaf, the water evaporates. This is transpiration. Some students confuse. They say transpiration is only when water loss from the leaf. No. Okay. It's from the roots until it evaporates uh, through the leaves. Okay. So that is the whole transpiration process. So 90% of water diffuses out through stomata pores in the leaves. Okay. 90%. So if you want to see the xylem functioning, okay, there's an activity zone where you can prove that stomata of the leaf is are the main site of transpiration. Okay, so you can use this, use eosin solution or any red dye or whatever dye color you can use. Okay, and a celery stalk, uh, stalk. So you leave it for one hour, okay, and then you can check it out, you examine, okay, uh, the celery after 24 hours. Okay, and you can see that water is moving up the xylem. So the red color, okay, the eosin coloring, okay, will color the xylem because water is transported through the xylem from the roots to the leaves. And when you cut the leaf also, okay, when you look at the leaf, when it is left for many days, the leaf turns red. So that means the red color water is transported from the roots or the stems in this case to the leaf. Okay, so now let's look at the importance of transpiration. Now, transpiration, only 1% of water is used in plant cells for photosynthesis. The rest evaporates from the leaves. Okay, 99% of it just gone into the atmosphere. Okay, but why do we then, why do the plant need to absorb so much of water? Okay, so water is actually, you know, they actually absorb the heat energy from the leaves. Okay, and it evaporates. When it evaporates, it gives a cooling effect to the leaf. Okay, so it's maintained the temperature of the plant. Okay, it also produces a pulling force that moves the water, okay, and also mineral salt uh, from the xylem vessel, okay, continuously in the xylem vessel from the roots to the plant cells. So when that happens, it's actually preventing the plants from wilting. It stays upright. So water movement up, 
upwards okay so it maintains the cell turgidity the plants stay upright okay they don't wilt okay and also it helps to supply water to all plant cells for metabolic processes okay you think plants only carry out photosynthesis you are wrong okay plant also carry out metabolic processes okay and you will learn more about transpiration in chapter 4 okay so now you know just that transpiration this is it right okay now uh, there are also uh, you know um Factors that affect the rate of transpiration is not just water moves up and that, that's it, finish. No. But the different factors that affect the rate of transpiration are the main four, which is light intensity, temperature, air movement, relative air humidity, the main four. But there are also other factors which we won't be seeing in this subtopic, okay, that actually affect uh, the rate of transpiration. For example, we have a uh, number of leaves okay um, surface area of the leaves level of air pollution yes air pollution this affect the rate of water transpiration okay position of the leaves where is it positioned okay and also the location of the plants whether they are in a cool region they are in a hot region it does play a role okay so yeah So now let's look at the four main factors that affect the rate of transpiration with graph. Okay, so now let's look at high, uh, light intensity first. Okay, the hypothesis is that, uh, hypothesis conclusion, okay, the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of transpiration. Now, sunlight, okay, sunlight provides heat energy for the leaves and it increases the evaporation of water, correct or not? So, an increase in the light intensity will increase the rate of transpiration. More water will be absorbed. Now, during the day, okay, um, increasing light intensity will stimulate the stomata opening. Stoma open. Okay, and increases the, when stoma open, it increases the rate of evaporation. So, more water will diffuse out from the leaves, okay, through the stomata into the atmosphere. So, when this happens, increase in the rate of transpiration but in the dark okay stoma closes correct when stoma close evaporation rate decreases no nothing to go out what to go out okay so less water diffuses out from the stoma so rate of transpiration is low stoma closes so we say that we say that the higher the light intensity the higher the rate of transpiration the lower the light intensity the lower the rate of transpiration so it follows higher higher lower lower okay Next, we see temperature. Okay, so the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of transpiration. Same concept with light intensity. Okay, high temperature increases the rate of transpiration. So why? Because there is an increase in kinetic energy and movement of water molecules. Temperature high, boiling water. I mean, it doesn't boil, but the kinetic energy and the movement of uh, water molecules. So they actually move out through the stomata more quickly. Okay, so when this water keep evaporating from the leaf they have to absorb again water from the roots go up to the leaf a lot of work so transpiration rate increases okay so evaporation rate increases in the mesophyll cell when evaporation rate increases rate of uh, transpiration also increases okay so far okay good all right uh next is Okay, relative air humidity. Now you can see the graph is going downwards. So, yeah, it's the other way around. Now, air humidity is how much of um, water molecules are there in the atmosphere, in the air. Okay, like for example, on a rainy day where, you know, our atmosphere is filled with water molecules, water vapor. Okay, so this one, transpiration rate will become now lower. How is it? Now, high humidity surrounding the leaf. Okay, when there is a lot of water molecules, water vapor around uh, the leaves, the evaporation of water reduces from the stoma. Okay, so this causes the transpiration to slow down. Okay, so slow, the water don't have to rush to quickly go out from the leaves. So, you know, so this causes the transpiration to slow down. But you see, just now you saw the temperature. As the temperature rises, it uh, lowers the relative humidity to the surrounding air. Okay, so higher temperature means low humidity. 
uh, high humidity meaning low temperature okay so this so again the lower relative air humidity uh, of the surrounding atmosphere the higher the rate of transpiration okay the higher the rate of transpiration becomes higher okay I, all right so um yeah now last one air movement there is it all right so air movement okay now air movement on a windy day you know the air movement is high so what happens is that um okay um a faster air movement actually helps to remove the water vapor this water vapor usually that diffuse you know through the stomata will actually accumulate around the uh, leaf surface so air will actually remove this water vapor now this air movement increases the concentration gradient between the water vapor in the leaf and also that is outside the leaf so this will actually increase the transpiration rate okay so when the air is still transpiration rate is decreases or it just stops altogether so now you're looking at the graph okay you look at the graph you see that um, the rate of transpiration increases okay when light intensity is high okay um, temperature is high and also wind speed so when this increases rate of transpiration also increases until a certain level and then there are other limiting factors that will cause the transpiration rate to become constant but for relative humidity okay as the relative humidity increases the transpiration rate decreases so only this is different okay air humidity but the rest is the same so when question come out uh, you know for a hypothesis or for a conclusion okay so it's all the same the higher the light intensity the higher the rate of transpiration the higher the temperature the higher the rate of transpiration the faster the air movement the higher the rate of transpiration okay but the lower the air humidity the higher the rate of transpiration okay clear okay so this is the experiment that you are supposed to do from this uh, subtopic okay to study the effect of environmental factors on the rate of transpiration using a photometer now okay so uh, i will show you in the next slide but you know uh, what the result you are supposed to you know expect is that all the uh, you know the distance traveled by the air bubbles okay and the transpiration rate now transpiration rate will always be higher when the light intensity air movement and also temperature is higher but when the air humidity is higher the rate of transpiration is lower so that is the the the, the basic uh, you know uh, results that you are supposed to get from this experiment because it's almost similar for all kinds of plants okay but make sure when you do this experiment you have the plant with a lot of green leaves okay a lot of leaves so that the transpiration process can happen uh, clearly and the leaves have to be dry if the leaves are not dry then the transpiration rate will be very slow okay i'll show you in the next slide okay so now this is uh, a photometer okay if you look at the picture a water photometer okay which we can use to you know uh, measure the rate of water uptake in cut shoot okay so this is equal to the water loss of uh, you know through transpiration okay so this is a photometer now the movement of air bubble okay so when you place it look at the you know experiment clearly so when you put the leafy twig here and also the photometer so we are going to actually see the air bubble okay air bubble movement so the movement of the air bubble is due to transpiration pool and the rate of transpiration is actually equivalent to the distance traveled by the air bubble in the capillary tube in a given measure of time so you have to just measure the air bubble as it moves okay and see how much it does it move using a ruler or now this photometer they have the scaling that all together so you can have a look so the the higher the transpiration rate the more the bubble will move if the transpiration rate is uh, lower the distance is usually lesser okay so i have a video but i think i'll put it in the description box below so you can have a look at the video on how to conduct uh, the photometer experiment okay Okay, we are done. Okay, we are done. So, as usual, you have to do the formative practice 2.3. Okay, so here the question is, what is the meaning of transpiration? 
and state the relationship between the transpiration and also stomata. Okay, so what is the relationship? Transpiration and stomata. Okay, now other than higher temperature and faster air movement, light intensity also affect the rate of transpiration. Explain. So we have to talk about light intensity and how it affects the rate of transpiration. Okay, and number three, plant X was submerged in flood for two days. When the water subsides, the leaves of plant X were covered with mud. Okay, so how does this condition affect the rate of transpiration? Okay, so think about it. Okay, get your answers. Then you can check your answers in the description box below to see whether you get the concept right or wrong. Okay. That's all. We are done. Okay, so make sure you, uh, you know, you learn well. If you still can't understand, you can go through the video again. And if there is still a problem, you can always, uh, you know, uh, get it written down on the comment box. Okay, and uh, yeah, with that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.